ジャギ様から盗み取った北斗神拳北斗を味合わせてやるわ<笑>Hello everybody, welcome to the video. My name is Midway and I hope you're doing alright today. We are going to be looking at all the changes that have happened to Holy Paladin on the Dragonflight beta over the last two weeks that we haven't really looked at it. But before we get into it though, I gotta clear a couple things up. First of all, my voice is a little bit raspy, excuse that, I got a cold. And also, as you can see, the background is a little bit different. And the reason for that is because I am right now not in Spain, not in my house. I am instead studying abroad in an apartment shared with a bunch of friends. So I don't have my usual setup, I don't have my desktop, I have a laptop. Laptop, which is barely able to run wow so we're gonna be doing less videos but we will try and manage and do as much as we can so let's get into the articles for wowhead all right so as i said my setup is really scuffed so i hope everything's all right but here we go first i want to point out an article that came out already quite some time ago but 12 days ago where they are the wow developers are already expressing that they are shifting their focus away from three class three designs uh, the talent trees over to fixing bugs and also tuning so there are no longer going to be any big changes to the talent trees but we will be getting big shifts in where the power is coming from in the trees based on these bug fixes there is a lot of bug fixes that have already happened for holy paladins so if you want to read through this it will be down in the description as always but now we are going to be running real quick over through the tier set for Holy Paladin. There's been a tier set unveiled for Holy Paladin. It's right there. I hope you can see it all right. I cannot really see a second screen. But the tier set is pretty simple as it's meant to be for this first season of Dragonflight. And the two piece is the following. Holy Shock increases the critical strike chance of your next heal spell within 12 seconds by 10%. So every time you Holy Shock, your next healing spell is going to be 10% stronger. Cool. And the next, next up, the four piece says, when your direct healing spells critical strike, your next holy shock within 12 seconds deals 30% additional damage or healing. So giving a lot more value to critical strike. So we want to be critical striking a lot. So our next holy shock is going to be doing more and more healing. Now, this really shows that they're pushing for... Um, much more of a holy shock centric build. In fact, there's been some changes that make that even more of a thing. And uh, yeah, it also shows that Critical Strike might just come back a little bit more as it used to be before where Infusion of Light was much more of a bigger part of the, the, the whole kit for a Holy Paladin. And we're talking about Legion already, so that's a long time ago. But uh, let's go first through the changes that were happened already quite a while ago. There's been some changes happening yesterday, but first we'll, we'll cover them on chronological order. Um, first of all, <clears throat> they have uh, changed Holy Shock from a non category spell to a Holy Spell, whatever, nothing matters over there. Avenging Crusade is now working and it was absolutely bumping. I haven't tried it yet, but I was seeing some footage. Um, questions about whether that's going to be, you know, meta or not. There's some aura changes here. I, mean, I don't really think or know rather if these actually have any impact, but. Apparently, now Mastery is taken into account for the modifier as well as something about a dummy. Don't really know how that means, but either way, ignore those. It's simply working now and doing a lot of healing. Barrier of Faith has been buffed from 20% accumulated healing from your uh, Flash of Light and Holy Light over all the way to 40. So it's been doubled up in power. Now, is Barrier of Faith gonna be good now? I still don't really think it is based on the testing that I did. I need to play around with it a little bit more. Um, you can keep this up a lot, like almost up all the time. It, it lasts for 18 seconds and it, it's, it has a 25 second cooldown, right? So you could potentially have this up uh, pretty much all the time. And uh, if you are doing a lot of healing with Flash of Light and Holy Light, well, you're, you're going to be accumulating some of that as an Absorb Shield into somebody. So it might become a meaningful spell, but so far still pretty minor. They also nerfed Divine Revelations, the Empower... Uh, part of it that affects uh, holy light so whenever you consume <coughs> infusion of light sorry um, and you had um, a divine revelations talented uh, you would get some mana refunded that's been halved down to one percent that's okay i don't really know if that was abusable they buffed echoing blessings back to the status that it has right now in shadowlands at least for the part of the movement speed but they also increased the damage reduction after using a Bob, Freedom, or uh, Blessing of Sacrifice. So, <coughs> excuse me, my boy is absolutely done for. But 
It's been buffed to 15%. This means that after every sack, you're going to have a lingering 15% damage reduction. You're potentially going to have a pretty big uptime with the one minute sacks of quite some damage mitigation. This is very, very good looking for Holy Paladins in general. The part about Bob and spell warding is a little bit less, you know, of a thing, but, you know, Pressing of Freedom does not give the damage reduction. That's just Bob and Sack, but still, those are quite some decent numbers over there. Uh, making uh, Echoing Blessings a little bit more of a thing that you would consider. Now, a lot of the Martyr has been... Uh, it's been fixed, apparently. I think it's all, it's now actually doing damage to ourselves, as it was meant to. So they've, they've changed some things about it. It says it's been removed, but it's all actually in the game, so don't worry about that. Um, in fact, you can just log into the PTR right now and test it out. And then they changed power of the Silver Hand <clears throat> to be actually capped to one proc per minute, instead of being infinite procs, so before... Whenever you healed <clears throat> with Holy Light or Flash of Light, you would always proc um, this power of the Silver Hand, so it would accumulate the healing and damage done um, onto your next Holy Shock for a bunch of seconds and blah blah blah. It made your Holy Shocks pretty strong, and it was always proccing, so you could always keep this up, and it would always make your next Holy Shock a little bit stronger. So, basically, on average, you would just make your Holy Shocks stronger. How much? Depends. But, yeah, it was always proccing, now that's being changed to 1. We're gonna be looking at these specific changes in the beta in a second. We'll log into the client and we'll test it out and we'll then cover it with some voiceover because I can't really record both things at the same time under the setup. But that's definitely lost a lot of power. It's way, way less attractive right now. How much less? Probably a lot less. Second Sunrise has been changed as well, but I think that's just a tooltip error. It's Still the same as I remember it to be, it's 10 and 20% chance of casting another Light of Dawn, so that's still the same as I believe. And then down here, <coughs> in the general changes, my voice is giving up on me guys, I'm sorry. Um, they just changed the tooltip of Avenging Wrath and they made it so that, you know, all the effects that you can add up with the talents that you talent into, now they just... Um, you know, it also activates those effects. It's just a tooltip change, nothing more. And Consecration also seems to have a typo right here. Don't think that's uh, an actual buff, because it just seems to me that they typed something that they didn't mean to, so... Um, so far, I think we should ignore that. <clears throat> they also changed the way this is uh, Aspirations of Divinity is worded out, but it still does the same. It gives you 1% increased primary stat. If you have one stack, 2% per stack if you have two stacks of the talent. So you should potentially go all the way to 6% with three stacks of the talent. And also two stacks of... Um, sorry, two stacks of the talent and three stacks of the buff. You can stack the buff all the way to three with three consecutive uh, Crusader Strikes. And you can stack the talent all the way to two stacks. So there's a lot of stacks going on over there. Golden Path has been... Uh, um, fixed up somehow. It's still probably dog shit, but... Yep. Some wording changes over there. And uh, don't really think that's going to make anything uh, meaningful happen. Now, they fixed up this uh, talent, Obdurasi or whatever. It wasn't really doing what it said. It didn't really give you 2% speed or avoidance. The values have been changed. Now, it should be the case. Dusk and Dawn has also been fixed. It didn't really work, at, apparently, according to these changes. In any case, we should <clears throat> test that out in-game. Some new aura effects added onto things. Values changes, <clears throat> and also they fixed um, Blessing of Seasons. It's now no longer just Blessing of Summer, but also Blessing of Winter, Blessing of blah, 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 blah. You know, all the different blessings are actually in place. So now let's jump in game and see these things for ourselves and comment onto them. Actually, we're not going to jump into the game just yet. We're going to be looking at the changes that happened yesterday to Holy Paladin, where they changed the initial healing from Barrier of Faith from an actual healing to an absorb, so that's something that could potentially make it a little bit more useful. The initial healing was also pretty lackluster anyways. Glimmer of Light has also been buffed by 20%, both the damage and the healing from it, so that's making a Holy Shock-centric build even more of a thing. Really, uh, bumping up the power of Glimmer really hasn't happened for a long time. It's actually been pretty bad of a talent all the way through Shadowlands, so I liked seeing that. And then we just have a little bit of a tooltip change right here. Nothing matters here. This is like really... Nothing's changed over there, but... There is some other stuff here. Where... Mainly some bug fixes where 
Blessing of Protection now shares cooldown with Spell Warning. Some range changes, I don't really know what those are about. Fist of Justice seems to have had also the tooltip reworked uh, at least. I don't really see any talent changes here that are, um, you know, a thing. I don't know, I think Fist of Justice already had uh, two ranks, but I could be wrong. And then they also made Improved Blessing of Protection reduce the cooldown of Blessing of Spell Warding. Um, I guess this also works for other specs that already had spell warding, like for example, um, protection. And then we have Blessing of Seasons now actually being a full thing and actually working as intended. So yeah, that's about it. Now let's actually jump in-game and see these things for ourselves. Alright everybody, here we are in-game. We cannot use the camera for this because OBS would just make my PC crash if I open it up together with WoW. But this would have to suffice. So let's look at the things that have been changed and see if there's anything remarkable. First of all, as I mentioned before, Blessing of Seasons is now rotating as intended. So it is now changing from... Uh, well, the key event's not working, but there you go. I used it and now it's Blessing of Winter. So it's now working as it's supposed to. Now they also buffed Barrier of Faith. And what it says now is it says... Imbu a friendly ally, targeting with a barrier of faith, absorbing 16,000 damage for 12 seconds. That is quite a big buff. Before it used to do like 4k, like 4,000 healing. Now it's 16,000 absorbed. That's quite meaningful. And the transfer has also been increased quite substantially. So this could potentially be pretty strong in a caster build. Now we will be looking as well at some, uh, in the next video we'll be looking at some footage for some of the PTR testing that happened recently. So we'll see how much of each build has really been pumping out. But TLDR or rather spoiler, Holy Paladin was absolutely pumping in the most recent um, PTR testing. Uh, <clears throat> one thing that has also been changed is um, Second Sunrise, now whenever this procs the um, um, random free Lights of Dawn, this is no longer able to proc Divine Purpose or Awakening, so we cannot get any free um, casts of our spenders nor any free procs of wings out of the free Lights of Dawn we get from this. So we're getting nerfed a little bit over there, but we also got the buff to Glimmer, so that's really good. Now, let's look at Power of the Silver Hand. It got capped to only one proc per minute, so now, as it reads, Holy Light and Flush of Light have a chance to grant you Power of the Silver Hand, increasing the healing of your next Holy Shock by 10% of all damage and effective healing you do within the next 10 seconds. So, you can only get this up once a minute, meaning it's been gutted from 100% uptime down to one-sixth of that, and uh, we also need to proc it, so it's not 100% proc rate. Meaning we need to be spamming some flash of lights and eventually We also got a proc of veneration by the way Eventually we'll get a proc of power of the silver hand. I'm assuming um, We might need to cut this video until it does Well, it seems to me that it's not working. I've gone through my entire mana bar I've tried taking damage and healing myself seeing if it's only the actual healing that procs it, but it's never really proccing, it's supposed to be one proc per minute, but I'm already out of mana here and it is just not happening, right? It's it's meant to proc off of Holy Light and Flash of Light, so that seems to be absolutely broken once again. That is quite the thing. Anyways, now they have finally fixed up Unending Light, so now whenever you use uh, Light of Dawn and you consume uh, you know, Holy Power like that, it says, each holy power spent on Light of Dawn increases the healing done by your next War of Glory by 5%, up to a maximum of 45. So you can see here we have a buff. It lasts for quite a little bit. Let's refresh it and see. The max duration is 30 seconds. So now we have 6 stacks. It is increasing the healing of our next War of Glory by 30%. That wasn't really showing before, so we, we now got a bit of a way of tracking that. And uh, there we go, we can increase it all the way up to 45%. So the next uh, Water Glory we do, it's going to be quite fat, in theory. Let's see, let's use it on ourselves. And there we go, we did a 36k. That is more than likely increased, which is quite meaningful. But keep in mind, we also have 131k HP. So without the buff and no critical strike, we only did 26k. That's definitely working right now so there you go that's pretty cool 
<clears throat> new stuff, new stuff, new stuff. Uh, we already knew Seal of Order was um, was working, but now they finally fixed up the increase cooldown reduction thing and uh, the armor increase as well. At least so it seems on the tooltip, so... Let's go ahead up here and see if we can notice that cooldown reduction. So we gotta go all the way to 5 Holy Power. Well, we don't really have to, we just gotta go all the way down to 0. Keymates are not properly working, so things are really, a little bit weird. But there you go, we got Breaking Dawn, and we have the 10% increased damage and healing done on top of the other 10% increased damage and healing done. So, we got 20% increased damage and healing done over there. Oh yeah. Has that been changed? I don't really know, I think it might. Anyways, we got 20% increased damage and healing done just from that. Now we go all the way to zero Holy Power, and there we go, we get... 4% damage taken reduction, 10% increased armor, and the 10% increased cooldown reduction. So, do we feel that? Um, probably not. Unless we got numbers, which we don't right now, because we don't have OVI nor the cooldown set up. <clears throat> but we gotta cycle through our holy power quickly. Which, clearly I'm not able to, because of the key mines being stuck, or it's not working, but... Yeah, we go, and we proc the buff, and um, I don't really know, it's only 10%, right? It's like, real hard to tell. Can we see the recharge time? It's six, uh, it's, it's five seconds, with the buff. Without the buff, still gonna be five seconds, because it's only 10%. Yeah, the duty doesn't change. So, we assume it is working, we got a little bit of CDR on things like Holy Shock and Crusader Strike and potentially also Arcane Torrent or Divine Toll. Not really sure how many of these Holy Power Generating Abilities are really actually working together <coughs> with this. But, we could speculate that those do work. Now, Golden Bath has also been potentially buffed. I am not sure about this, but there was some tooltip changes, and now we can see it is actually working. It's also transferring the healing through the beacon, so we're getting some healing going on from it. Definitely gonna test that in a dungeon run and see how much it does compared to other things. But, yeah, should definitely take a look at Golden Bath. Other stuff that probably has been changed. I'm, I'm actually not sure about Fifth of Justice, but... Reducing the cooldown by 2 seconds for each holy power spent on Hodge. This is absolutely massive. Like, you're gonna have Hodges every so often. It's gonna be so, so, so... Um, just, just getting so many of them. Uh, especially gonna be very useful in PvP, I believe. Also, is this working now? Let's just talent into it. We see 2% avoidance and 2% speed. Are we gonna get those, or is it gonna be scuffed still? We shall see in a second. Changing talents. And uh, there we go, we got... Actually, 3% avoidance and straight up 2% speed, so that's actually working now. Maybe more than it should, because it says 3% avoidance, so... I mean, I'll take that. I will take that. There has also been um, a debuff over to Echoing Blessings, so whenever we freedom ourselves right now, if we manage to talent into freedom, first of all, that's gotta be a thing. We're gonna get a 15% increased movement speed, we also leave a lingering 15% damage reduction onto whoever we use Blessing of Sacrifice on. So we could potentially just suck somebody, but we need to be in the same group as them. And then they would get the 30% damage reduction for 12 seconds and death, actually 20%, sorry. No, it, it is, so never mind, it, it is 30, I'm, I'm actually just blind. It is 30%, <clears throat> but... Then after that's gone, they will also get 15% damage reduction with no damage transfer to you for the next, uh, however many seconds that is, 8 seconds. So you would have uh, 20 seconds in total of damage reduction active. It's gonna be 30 at first, and then it's gonna be 15. And you're gonna have Blessings of Sacrifice every minute. So you could have a massive uptime, a 33% uptime of some sort of mitigation throughout any form of content. If you just keep on using Blessing of Sacrifice on cooldown, which you definitely won't, will not be doing, but you can get multiple uses throughout fights and even packs or every single pack in Mythic Plus, you could have a massive amount of very long mitigation from, from Sack. That is pretty huge. So, what was I looking at actually? I completely forgot. Hold up. 
Let me, let me reacquaint myself with this. I completely forgot what I was gonna be talking about. Oh yeah, echoing blessings. Now I have blessing of freedom. I just use it on me, and uh, my speed. It's not showing. There's never really been a buff, but you can tell as soon as the buff is gone, I'm gonna be a little bit slower. No, you get it afterwards. I completely forgot about that as well. You can see the speed is not changing there on the tooltip, but I am supposed to be faster. 15% pass faster, so that's good. It's been made a little bit more relevant. It completely lost all relevancy before when that was changed. I don't think I left anything major to talk about here on the actual Paladin tree. On the class tree, well, we just have the good old same old. Might just be made into the Critical Strike. Avenging Crusade has been fixed and it works pretty well with things like Mad Power now also being extend uh, or rather extending the duration of wings by one second when you throw a Judgment. Also increasing the damage of Judgment, making our wings potentially way longer. And that combined with Avenging Crusader will just make Judgment into um, quite a fat heal. Um, Avenging Crusader still has the same drawbacks as before. It costs a lot of mana. In particular, it costs, what is it, 25% of our mana. How much mana do we even have right now? We, it is 10%, never mind. It is 10% of our mana. It's really costly. And it's RNG amount of healing, right? It's gonna go randomly on the people that it chooses to. Never really choosing those that are gonna benefit the most from the healing. So it could potentially scuff you up. But this has proven to do a lot of healing. And the fact that you can keep on extending the duration of your wings. Just proccing awakenings and getting 10 seconds randomly of uh, Avenging Crusader. Being able to extend the duration of Avenging Crusader off of Hammer of Wrath. And judgment and then also potentially playing veneration which you probably wouldn't really do unless you are playing a caster build but you could still get veneration and get more free hammers of wrath to further extend the duration of avenging crusader of course um hammer of wrath does not transfer the healing from its damage through avenging crusader but still it gives you holy power and it does some damage so that's something that we'll look at during the ptr testing videos and analysis of the logs where we'll see that people were pumping with that, and we'll also cover up the different builds that might have been pretty cool. So, last couple things, we are now once again taking damage out of using Lada the Martyr to all the people, so you can see I am taking quite a big amount of damage from healing that other person. And the uh, stacks we get out of Aspirations of Divinity, you can see now they correctly say that they increase the intellect by 2% per stack, so we get all the way up to 6% increase intellect, which adds just massive for a melee build. If we just keep on spamming Crusader Strike, we can keep that buff up <coughs> with 100% uptime. So that will be pretty, pretty strong. You can see our intellect is now 5,816. And then once we drop it, it goes down to 5,691. So yeah, we get quite a bunch of intellect from that. By the way, as a finishing note, here is the post where they said that Divine Purpose and Awakening can no longer be triggered from Second Sunrise, that being the talent that gives you the free Lights of Dawn after you cast a Light of Dawn, with a chance of course. And that's gonna be it. So that's it for me guys this time around, I hope you enjoyed the video. As you can see, they didn't really change anything drastically, as that's not the point of the talent changes anymore, they're just bug fixing and maybe buffing and nerfing stuff. As we already mentioned, we will be checking out how the PTR testing went for Holy Paladins, we'll look at some footage and some logs, and we'll talk about some builds. The purpose of this video was not to lay out any builds or build potentials that will be very strong, we're just looking at the talents and the individual changes. We'll talk about actual meta and what looks like will be strong as we are approaching deeper and deeper into the beta and the release but yeah i'll see you on the next video hopefully see you there and i hope you didn't mind my voice being a little bit raspy but yeah hopefully we can still enjoy some videos together cover up some holy paladin stuff and uh, yeah have some fun in dragonflight i'll see you next video bye, -bye everybody